So, the topic is about the stages of dyeing. Dyeing is adding color to the fabric or the substrate and there are different types of dyes available and in the past when we see those were the times when natural dyes were being used to decorate the fabric. So, fabric decoration is also not new, it was there since a prehistoric time and now we have mostly the synthetic dyes where uh, the synthetic dyes are being used in a various manners to dye the fabric and the varieties of synthetic dyes are available based on the varieties of fabrics that we have today in the market and the compatibility between the type of fiber and the type of the dye is most important for it to have a very long lasting color on the fabric or we call it it has to have a light fastness or a color fastness to laundering or color fastness to other factors as well. So, the type of dyeing can differ about uh, from the stage the textile material is being created until it is being uh, finished. That means, from the type uh, the fiber stage to the garment stage you can dye the fabric or the textile material at different stages. So, we will see about the different types. In the beginning we can see that it was all manual process that was being done, but now we have the machineries that do a lot of work about the dyeing process. To first understand how it has to be done, we should understand what are the different processes that are involved in the dyeing and at what stages the textile materials can be dyed and we should see the procedures which are very good at each of this stage. And finally, we should know which would be the best suitable procedure for a different type of a fabric material and based on the advantages or the disadvantages of e each of these processes. So, we can add dyes to any of the stage that is from the fiber to the fabric. So, we see that the different fabrics will take different dyes in a different manners and the proper dye selection is a very very important one and as I told you earlier we had a manual methods in the beginning. So, there were some problems encountered with that. Now, we have the machinery that have been replaced for the manual methods. Here are two varieties of machines where in which one of the method we can see the dye solution is passed through the fabric or through the textile material. The second method is that where the dye uh, is kept stationary, the fabric moves in the dye solution and now we have the advanced machineries wherein we can see both the method that is circulating the dye or keeping the dye stationary can be taking place. So, when we see the classification of the dyeing methods, we can see the stock dyeing where it is dyed in the fiber stage, we call it as a stock dyeing method. For wool, one step nearer to the yarn stage, we have another method called the top dyeing because it is so called because combed wool is termed so and uh, we have a toe dyeing where untwisted filament yarn is called a toe and we have another one called the mass pigmentation or the gel dyeing all these would come under the uh, fiber level. The next we have the fiber is composed into a yarn where we can use the yarn and dye the fabric and the next method is the piece dyeing where the yarn is converted into a fabric. And then we have the last one after the fabric is converted into a garment as well called the garment dyeing. So, at the fiber stage we call the producer dyeing or the dope dyeing, mass pigmentation, spun dyeing each of these would designate the same thing that is you are dyeing at the fiber stage of the textile material. For the synthetic materials it is impossible to dye the material after the fabric is made because it requires a different type of a machinery high temperature and high pressure to give a depth color into the fabric. So, for that the synthetic fibers are generally colored or dyed at the stage when they are in the liquid form that we call it as dope dyeing. So, here the color is added the pigment especially is added to the liquid solution before it is been extruded through the spinneret. So, by this way what happens is the dye molecule becomes an integral part of the fiber and the fibers that are produced by this method are called the producer dyed and the fabrics are called the producer dyed fabrics. That is the reason why synthetic fabrics have a very uh, light fastness for everything or the color fastness properties for the fabrics. The next stage would be the gel dyeing especially it is for the wet spun manufactured fiber that is some fibers like acetate are wet spun. So, during this process the fiber before it hardens would be in a stage like a gel. So, in during that stage when the dyeing is taking place we call it as gel dyeing. So, here also 
the dye gets trapped within the fibers and so it gives a very fastness property. And then coming to the stock dyeing generally it is a batch process and here the fiber is dyed and for this we have two different varieties of dyeing machinery one is the vat dyeing and the other is the bale dyeing. So, in the vat dyeing the bales that come from the cotton industry they are opened up here they are put into vats uh, that is a bigger vessel and in which the dye solution is pumped through the fiber and back again out of the fiber. In such a case what happens is the dye solution can color is taken up so well by the fiber that you get a very good coloring at the end. And in the bale dyeing the same bale instead of opening uh, and then putting the fiber directly into the vat here the bales are cut open and directly the bale itself is put into the bale dyeing machinery and the dye solution is passed through it and so dyeing takes place. So, in fact bale dyeing is supposed to be the best one because it saves a lot of time and labor. And in case of vat dyeing we can see that around 500 to 3000 pounds of fiber can be dyed at a time and an average being the 1000 uh, pounds. Now, the stock dyeing is supposed to be the most effective method of dyeing both in terms of the method, but here what happens is after the dyeing the as soon as the dyeing takes place there is every possibility that the fiber becomes stiffer or a little coarser. So, this becomes very difficult in the spinning stage. The stock dyeing there are some advantages and disadvantages as well. So, the advantage we have it is we have a very good color throughout the fiber, but the disadvantage is that it loses its flexibility and so some lubricants are required to make it more flexible. And in case the inner parts of the fiber bale does not take up the color, then this can be overcome by blending the fiber in the next stage where the fiber bales are opened up and again blended together for the spinning purpose. The next type of dyeing we have is the toe dyeing or the top dyeing. In top dyeing it is meant only for the worsted industry where in the worsted industry the worsted yarn is the one which is very straight and longer types of fibers are used in the industry and so it is called as tops. So, that is the name that is given as top dyeing. So, this is also in a fiber stage, but here it will be like a loose rope form about about one fourth inch of a thickness. And so, in this condition it is spun around a perforated spool and these spools are present are placed into the machinery where dye is circulated and so through the perforations the dye passes on to the fiber and it dyes or gives a very even dyeing. Toe dyeing is another method wherein the filament yarn which is not given any twist is supposed to be called as a toe. And this toe dyeing is done when the fiber is in the filament form cut into a staple length and then dyed directly before it is being spun. And this is supposed to be the least expensive one because all the dyed fibers are used here. Whereas, in stock dyeing there is a little problem or a disadvantage there where after the stock dyeing is done during the process of blending, during the process of carding and further process there may be some wastage of fiber that goes. So, because of that toe dyeing is supposed to be advantageous than even the stock dyeing. Then the next stage at which the yarn can be dyed is the yarn stage. That means, here the fiber is been converted into a yarn and then later the yarn is generally dyed. So, yarn is dyed for various purposes where you can see the multicolor designs are possible because of the yarn. Because if one type of yarn is dyed in another one color and another set of yarn is dyed in another color and both are used in the weaving purposes in different methods. You can see that you get a very checked effect like one example is the ginams and uh, the madras fabrics which are done at the yarn stage. The dyeing of this is very easier because it uh, the dye penetrates into the core of the yarn and the yarn is also called as a dyed yarn. And there are different methods of dyeing this where it can be dyed in the form of a skein, it can be dyed in the form of a package or it can be dyed in the form of a beam as well. So, when we take the skein dyeing where skein is the long yarns that are loosely wound. So, these are looped over rods. So, between the two rods the yarn hang or the skein is placed 
and it put into the dye bath and here the rods have a facility to move in and out thereby loosening and then stiffening the hank or the skin that is present on it thereby allowing the penetration of the dye into the yarn. At the end because there is no tension on that we find the dyed yarn is soft, loft and it is mostly the knitting yarn that undergoes the yarn dyeing. And even the uh, handloom industry yarn dyeing takes place and for them the yarn is available in the form of a skeins as well. But there is a little disadvantage here because after dyeing again the yarn from the skeins have to be rewound into a possible spools or cones for the further processing. And then we have the second variety in this called the package dyeing where the yarn is already wound onto the spools and cones. But here before winding it on spools and cones, the spools and cones should also have a perforations. So, yarn is wound on that and it is put into the machinery where the dye would be passed through the main machinery and it passes through the perforations through the yarn and then it comes out and again the reverse of the dyeing takes place that is the flow will be from outer to inner side and inner to the outer side thereby creating a very good penetration of the uh, dye. But the only problem here is the yarn that is derived out of package dyeing may not be as loft as the one that has been skein dyed. And mostly for woven fabrics and to some extent the knitted fabrics also this yarn can be used. And the next variety we have is the warp beam dyeing where if in case the warp is to be in one color that is if the whole fabric the warp yarn is to be in one color then instead of doing either the skein dyeing or the package dyeing there are big warp beams a perforated beam onto which the warp yarn is directly wound onto that and the beam itself is directly pressed into the dye bath it is uh, a cylinder shape and so the dyeing machine has a possibility to take up this warp beam and then you can see that the dye is penetrated through the beam which is hollow in nature in the center and so again the flow of uh, the circulation would be uh, out and in of the yarn. Thereby what happens is it is supposed to be the most economical method because you do not need to wind it again because it is already wound onto the warp beam. So, this is the uh, most uh, uh, economical method uh, when compared to the skein dyeing or the hang dyeing the earlier methods of the yarn dyeing methods. And then in this we have another method called the space dyeing where you can see there is a variation in the plain uh, yarn. So, here what is done is the spotting of color is done here and there over the yarn in such a way that once it is made into a fabric you get a very uh, different varieties of colors onto that available or visible. This can be accomplished not only by only one method of spraying color onto the yarns at different intervals, but also by dyeing a knitted fabric and then raveling it and again re knitting it. So, by this method also we can get where we can see we can call those effects as mortal defects or variegated coloration effects. And one more uh, thing that can be done is in the yarn package impregnation method where with needle the color is sprayed onto the yarn at different intervals and different colors can be sprayed. Generally this type of space dyed yarn is mostly used in the carpet industry because it disguises the soil and the soil is not visible in fact. The next method or the next step at which the textile material can be dyed is the piece dyeing. The term dyed in piece is uh, more apt for it because uh, after the fabric is made the dyeing takes place. So, this is also very helpful because once the stock dyeing takes place it has to undergo uh, again the process of manufacturing into a yarn and again yarn into a fabric. And so, by the time we know that fashion is so fast in the market and so um, when there is a demand for a particular color it may not be possible to make a stock dyeing and then bring it to the fabric. So, if fabric is available dyeing at the fabric stage is most economical and we will be able to meet the demand immediately by the fabric method. So, here there are some specific names given like union dyeing we say cross dyeing we say we call it tone on tone dyeing or sometimes the reserve dyeing also. So, in union dyeing though the fabric contains uh, 
it's not that every time a fabric contains 100% of one particular fiber it may be a combination of fibers say for example if a fabric contains a silk and a cotton maybe cotton would be in the warp or uh, silk would be in the weft in such a case when this fabric has to be dyed in one single color it is not possible and it is possible only with a particular method called the union dyeing method so in this you can use a single bath method or even the two bath method in the single bath method the dye is added in such a way that first dye is more applicable for silk and other dye is added in the same bath where it is applicable for the cotton but the color that is used for both the dyes would be the same suppose it has to be dyed in red then the red color dye is suitable for silk like acid dye can be used and for cotton the red color which can be used uh, a vat dye can be used there so when both are used the acid dye is taken up by the silk and the other dye is taken up by the cotton so thereby the colored fabric will remain the same the color of both the warp and the weft would remain the same at the same time you are able to dye both a fabric containing a blend or a mixture so this is one bath method sometimes two bath method is there wherein after dyeing the first in one bath then only one color is taken up there by the warp yarn say for example and then when you dye that in the second bath then the weft yarn would take up the color giving a very even color so here two or more classes of dyes each of the same color is generally used in the union dyeing procedure then we have the second method called the cross dyeing where this cross dyeing is mostly important for giving multicolored effects if fabric contains more than two different types or more than one type of fibers they are purposely dyed in a such a way that one type of fiber would take up one color and the other type would take up another color so the type of arrangement of fibers within the fabric would give you a varied varieties of uh, colors so generally like natural and man made fibers or from the same generic group which were modified to accept dyes are generally used and this is also supposed to be a very flexible economical and a speed method for the dyeing of fabrics and then we have another type of dyeing called the tone on tone dyeing the same color would look lighter and sometimes it looks darker so in this it is called differential dyeing also so the same type of fiber with the same generic group one is more reactive to the dye one is less reactive to the dye so when such a fiber is being used in the manufacture of a fabric then when color is added to the dye bath the one which is more reactive to the dye would take up a deeper shade and the one which is less reactive to the dye would take up a lighter shade thereby we have two different tones of the same color in the same single bath but by using the two types of the same generic fiber but a different reactive reactiveness towards the dye the one more method we have is the reserve dyeing in this we can reserve one fiber from being dyed whereas we can dye the other fiber so here the one which is reserved without taking up the dye would generally be white in color or sometimes it so happens the face of the fabric can be dyed in color whereas the back of the fabric can be left like that so by applying uh, certain uh, chemicals onto that it will be possible to take up the reserve dyeing so these uh, in effects can be created by using uh, different types of uh, uh, treatments to the fibers and keeping the construction itself where if you have a, a basket weave construction in that you can use different types of yarns in the warp and the weft direction one you can reserve it and one you can dye it in fact so in almost all the piece dyeing methods we can see that there are different methods employed in the sense if we have talked about the stages of dyeing but how was this piece material or the material is being dyed in different methods so this is based on the suitability of the fabric so like you know there are some long lengths of fabric that can be dyed or sometimes in batch method batch method is the shorter lengths of fabric that can be dyed so when you want to do it in a longer lengths we call it as a continuous method and when we use shorter lengths of fabrics to be dyed then we call it as a batch method so in the batch method we can say that there are two different varieties where you can keep the fabric open and dye where you can make the fabric into a rope form and dye as well so for making it into a rope form 
we have two different machinery called as a beck and jet dyeing and for making it in the open form we have the jig and the beam dyeing. So, beck dyeing is also called as a box or winch dyeing. So, generally open weave structured fabrics and wool fabrics are generally dyed in this method because there is no tension that is created on it and around 1000 meters can be dyed in this. So, in the first step the ends of the fabric are to be stitched together and then after stitching it is forms into a rope form and then it is put into this machine called the winch dyeing machine. So, here in this the arrangement is made in such a way that the some part of the fabric is always there in the dye bath for certain amount of time. So, because there is no tension on the fabric, the fabric that is dyed will be very pliable and good enough though it is dyed with a uh, synthetic color. Now, the next one we have is a jet dyeing where certain fabrics like woolen fabrics when more heat and pressure is applied they form into a felt. So, for such fabrics or sometimes they change the uh, dye for shade adjustment. So, some fabrics cannot tolerate such things. So, in such cases we go for the jet dyeing where the jet dyeing is like you know it is a closed tube like system uh, where the fabric goes into the rope form between this uh, in the tube like system and we can see the steam and pressurized dye liquor passes through that. And in fact, the fabric floats on this solution in a very tension free condition and so it goes at a very rapid speed and so we can see that the felting is avoided because of this though there is a high pressure and steam because the fabric is floating on the surface of the dye solution. And uh, the other one method is we have the open fabric method where jig dyeing is used. So, here we have rollers on which the fabric is wound from one end to the other end and there are some uh, guide rollers which would guide them into the dye bath. And here we can see the fairly close weave and heat sensitive thermoplastic fibers are generally used in here. And uh, suppose uh, the it contains some thermoplastic fibers where if you make it into a rope form and then dye it there is every possibility that permanent creases would effect on that. So, in such cases such fabrics can be dyed in jig dyeing. So, the fabric moves from one roller to the other in the first instance and then again from the second roller to the first roller depending upon the depth of shade that can be or that is required for that particular thing. Then we have a beam dyeing which is similar to that of the yarn dyeing where the warp beam dyeing is there. Instead of warp here we have a fabric that is wound onto a perforated rollers and all the lightweight fabrics and fairly woven weaves like tricot knits and all that tensionlessly they would be wound onto that and that is put into a machine so that the dyeing takes place evenly. And then we have the last variety called the garment dyeing where after the fabric is converted into a garment we have product made and the product also can be dyed. So, the machines that are used for this product are called supposed to be called as the paddle machines. So, we have a large tub in this where the dye solution is placed into the tub and this paddle wheel is placed over the tub and with the help of power the paddles move in a circular motion along with that you can see the garment also moves in a circular direction and uh, is continuously dyed. But one thing that is a problem here is sometimes the garments may go out of shape if proper care is not exercised. But here for quick response and the consumer demands and the fashion at the moment you can say that the garment dyeing is supposed to be uh, the best one which immediately after the garment is made you dye it and then it is there in the market ready for the sale. So, we these are the different types of dyeing methods we have at the fiber stage, at the yarn stage, at the fabric stage and what are all the different methods of equipment that can be employed for the fabric stage as well as the final stage at which the garment is directly dyed.